When I say that there is a gold standard of anime, something that completely lives up to the hype, something that stands the test of time, and is the go-to anime recommendation I would give to somebody that's never gotten into the medium. To me, it is no question, this is Cowboy Bebop. A series that combines brilliantly written characters, great action, humor, drama, mystery, and an artistic flair not found anywhere else. Creating a feeling of immersion in this futuristic yet lived-in world that feels broken, dirty, and uncertain, along with a specific jazz soundtrack that pulls everything together and creates a unique piece of art that's unlike anything else. As well, with only 26 episodes and one movie, it never overstates its welcome and gives you just enough to leave you wanting more, but at the same time, that short and sweet nature of the series length kind of adds to its charm. And like I said, although it's full of action and full of comedy, and they're all executed fantastically, I think when thinking about Cowboy Bebop as a whole, you don't really think about any of those things. Instead, you think about the characters, and that is the best praise that I can give it. When it comes to storytelling, I am a character-first kind of guy. Basically, what I mean by that is, if you give me a complex, fun, engaging character, I don't give a shit what the plot is about as long as I enjoy hanging out with them. I can watch an entire episode of them chasing a dog around or trying to get off a planet while eating some special mushrooms. We've all been there before. Having great characters and engaging dynamics between them mean more to me than needing to have a plot involving some sort of epic quest to save the world. The simplest way to describe Cowboy Bebop is it's a series that follows a group of bounty hunters as they try to survive in this beaten down futuristic worldscape. And that's pretty much it. The majority of the show is standalone episodes, meaning that within a 22 minute span, there is a situation that is brought up, acted upon, and resolved. And normally, I prefer ongoing storylines that continue episode to episode and make up one long narrative, but with Cowboy Bebop, it does the standalone so well, and each episode is so unique unto itself that it really doesn't matter. And actually, I would say that having full episodes where characters are just trying to track down a bounty head or fix a problem on a ship, or be able to eat that day, is kind of the point of the entire series. These characters are the misfits, outcast. They're people whose best stories are already behind them. They are drifting through life like the spaceship is drifting planet to planet, with a sense of loss, a sense of purpose taken away, running from a dark past or unable to face the things that they've done. We meet them as a ragtag group of bounty hunters that have nowhere to be and no one to come back to, lost with nothing but each other, and they honestly don't even have that much of anything in common, and yet they're all just trying to survive one day at a time. Their big grand adventures have already happened, and they keep remembering the past and the things that they've done before, or in some cases, they can't remember at all, and for the most part, it haunts them to their very core. And perhaps that's a reason why it resonates so well with people, because it's kind of a story about regret, about loose ends, and continuing to exist and go on even after all the massive life-defining stuff has already happened to you. There's a sort of whatever happens happens vibe that they all carry up until something from their past is brought up and sparks these unresolved issues and lack of closure, and oftentimes even a character like Spike, who is generally a very nonchalant and relaxed kind of guy, can absolutely fly off the handle. And Jet, who seems to be the most forward-thinking, can become thick-headed and with a lost sense of honor. But what works great about the standalone episode format and the way that the show is set up is that it really feels like you are hanging out with the characters day to day. You get to know them on a personal level, not just while they're chasing bounty heads and getting into fights, but also when they're hungover or starving. The setting as well gives you, like I said, a very lived-in feel. It's sci-fi, but it's not glamorous. And although their technology might seem fantastical to us, the way it's presented in the series is it's just standard stuff, nothing special just a dirty, broken down spaceship. And it keeps it relatable because they're still doing the same thing anybody else would to survive, they just happen to be doing it in a sci-fi setting. There's a deep sense of loneliness and isolation despite the characters being a team, but it was a team formed by a series of unfortunate events. Normally a former syndicate member, a former police officer, a chaotic girl without a past and a wild hacker would have no reason to intermingle or live on the same ship. Each of their character dynamics are very unique with one another, and I think it's safe to say that they could call each other friends, but each is so lost and caught up in their own specific problems that there is a lack of connection despite them being together. 
and though you get revelations and explanations into each character's past as the series goes on, you are mostly just given bits and pieces at a time, and it's up to you as the audience member to put those pieces together and formulate the entire story. And each character's backstory could have honestly been an anime within itself. And when it comes to the individual episodes, they mostly all carry their own kind of style, atmosphere, and even genre. We have comedy-based episodes like Mushroom Samba, where everybody gets stoned, or ones that are pulled out of a horror movie like Perot Le Fou, where Spike has to face a man that's been turned into a monster. And tragic pull-on-your-heartstring episodes like Speak Like a Child, where Faye makes a harsh discovery about her past. And I think this continued variation between episodes keeps you on your toes as you never quite know what to expect with Bebop, but you grow closer to understanding the characters and how they would react to things, so it's fun to place them in increasingly different kinds of scenarios. As opposed to a show that's all action-based and you know exactly what you're going to be getting, Bebop really throws curveball after curveball at you from episode to episode. Not to mention the art direction and the composition, the way the lighting, mood, and atmosphere is all used. It's absolutely incredible. And it's used so well that usually you won't even notice it, which to me is a testament to the skill involved. They often say in live action movies, if you don't notice the special effect, that's when the special effect works best. And I think the same thing is true with Bebop and its shifting tones and moods and the way each shot is staged. Oftentimes it's so good and so immersive that you don't even notice the shifting of tone. If I had to think of any fault in the series, uh, I think episode 4 isn't really a 10 out of 10. It, it's kind of meh. And that's, that's honestly it, just episode 4. All the rest are 10 out of 10s, and I'm not kidding. I love this show, I absolutely adore it, and I do not think it's overpraised, and I truly believe that it is a gold standard of anime. But I am also aware that I have a heavy nostalgia for the show, as it was one of the first adult-oriented anime I ever saw as a teenager. And it's older now, and having come out in the 90s, I know that it might not connect to the younger anime fans the same way it did for me and my other millennial friends. However, as I watch this anime, there's nothing about it that really dates it, I don't think. I think the animation still looks crisp and pretty perfect for what it is, and the story and characters work as well now as it did when it was released. The only criticism you could say is that it's overpraised or overhyped, and that it just simply didn't work for you. And that's okay, we don't all have to like the same things. But as far as a criticism of the story or the characters, I don't have any. I do think it's virtually flawless. It's a show that carries a gang of misfits from mission to mission, from obstacle to obstacle, and they have to keep moving forward and keep living because, well, just because. There's an emptiness and a monotony to it, but that's kind of like life. After it's beaten you down and destroyed your hopes and dreams and left you stranded, you still have to get up, you still have to find a way to get paid, and you still have to feed yourself. And people come in and out of your life, and you make connections, and sometimes it's with other people that you could never see yourself vibing with at all, and yet, here you are together. But I also think that ultimately, it's about those mistakes of our past, and how they can rule over our present if we let them. After all, no matter what you've done in life, you're gonna have to carry that weight. Anyways guys, this has been a quick review for Cowboy Bebop the anime series. Let me know what you think about the series in the comments below. Do you think it's overhyped? Do you think it's a gold standard like I do? Or do you think it's somewhere in between? Put all your thoughts, comments, and theories down below. I tried to keep this video spoiler free in case you haven't seen Cowboy Bebop before, just to give you kind of a vibe and an idea of what the series is about. I could go into more of specifics, but I feel like for right now we need a spoiler free review just in case there's anybody out there, perhaps you're a newer anime fan and you haven't gone back and delved into Bebop yet, and hopefully maybe this video has convinced you that you should. Other than that guys, I appreciate you watching this video, I really do. Please give it a like and a thumbs up if you enjoyed it. Check out the video description down below for my Twitter Instagram, Patreon links, as well as the Discord server, and there's also the Patreon link if you feel like supporting the channel on that deeper level. Other than that guys, I hope you enjoyed the video, subscribe if you want to stick around and see some more content, I hope you have a wonderful day, and I'll talk to you in the next video.